Um, I'm Robin. I work for Unizen, kind of managing the operations, the architecture, the finances, anything that falls off anybody's plate, essentially. Um, to my left here is Steve Shaw. He is our head of analytics. Um, and basically, we just wanted to spend a few minutes today and talk about kind of our analytics vision, our approach. And then I just really wanted to open it up and not rather than talk to you, just basically field some questions. If there's things on your mind, I figure we just go that route and do a little Q&A if that's cool. Otherwise, we'll to stand up here and talk. No, but with that said, I'm going to let Steve take it away Great. and we'll talk a little bit about analytics today. Great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, so over the last, oh, this is loud. Um, over the last 10 years, I've been in the interaction analysis space. And as the team, as the Unison team started to put together the vision here, um, we started to look at, and, it, and I have not been in higher ed, so you know, I'll just kind of throw that out there. But as we started to put together the vision here, it became very clear very quickly that we needed a, um, for our membership and for our members, we needed a, 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 an integration, an approach uh, that was repeatable, it was long term, and you were going to drive some action, and we were going to provide actionable data. So to our members, and you can take this data and you can drive, uh, drive some results, drive some positive outcomes. Uh, I've been in the space for about 10 years and I've seen where a lot of this data is presented, it's provided, and it just becomes another report and it, nothing's done with it. So I think there's, uh, as, as the institutions and as the members start to receive some of the data that Unison will provide, we are gonna be very, uh, cognizant of the fact that, look, we're providing this data, but we really need you to start thinking about how you are going to use this data moving forward. So with that, um, you know, our approach is provide actionable insights, actionable data, help you provide and build up uh, a prescriptive framework so you can take the data and go do something with it. And, and then it's up to you to kind of build that framework. And it's, it is going to be a paradigm shift, but as you, as you take the data, as you bring it in, you know, we, we're, we're very hopeful that you, know, you will be successful and be able to drive some change. Uh, we are looking at both the micro and macro levels. So from a micro level uh, course, coursework, how's that student doing? How are they performing? Are there times in the course that we can you know, identify uh, you know, change or action, interventions or actions within a certain course during that time? And then at the macro level, aggregate that information so we can start to benchmark and baseline and uh, you know overall is there courses we can change designs we can change in terms of uh, student retention and progression so that's our vision that's what we are working towards as we move forward uh, Unison is not developing the analytics we are working with vendors to uh, build and help the strategy and, and kind of deliver the solution we are you know, we're, we're, we're hoping to build and or deliver in the fall. Any questions there? Okay. So, Kim Arnold is not here, but Kim Arnold loves this slide. Uh, I think John and others loves this slide as well. We want to build an, uh, an environment for innovation. What does that mean? We need to establish a solid foundation and work our way towards optimization. So, we, you know, and I'll get into the different phases that we're gonna be uh, providing to our members. We need to start down here and start to give you the data that uh, you can start using in mining. And we're gonna start with some very basic early warning indicators. We are not gonna go into sophisticated analysis, predictive modeling, things like that from day one. It is establishing a data feed from Canvas, from the LMS, from, from other sources and repositories, and giving the institutions that data. Once you have that data, we will start working with you on providing alerts, modeling, dashboards, reporting, and ultimately, you, know, you're, you're, you have data where you can, you know, why is something happening and how do we change it? So it's, it's really starting down here and, our, and working our way up to sophisticated predictive modeling. Any questions? Okay. 
as I said, we're, we're defining phases that are, um, it, it's, it is a phase approach. So it's, it's uh, crawl, walk, run. For phase one, we are doing a real-time feed, getting that feed to our member institutions, and providing some very basic early warning indicators. <clears throat> For phase two, we would be providing additional predictive modeling and some additional analysis and reporting along with some dashboards. Phase three would be more sophisticated analysis <clears throat> and, uh, and then assessing what we've done in phase one and phase two. Any questions there? And these defined phases will ultimately lead to the end-to-end -end analytics approach that we hope to deliver to all of our members. One of the key things we've done, and, and Instructor has uh, accepted this challenge, is they're going to be providing us a real-time data feed from the LMS right away. So we're looking to deliver that in the fall. That's going to start helping us deliver early warning systems, student empowerment, uh, actions and, and, and you know, data where that can be used there, and then data that the faculty and advisors can use as well. Data will also be used <clears throat> in going into the data warehouse from a institution perspective. So each institution will have access to their own data, and you can start looking at student retention development and additional, uh, value, you know, additional uh, learning and, and resource development. These actions then would be provided to each one of these groups along, and then the content and the platform would be feeding into the analytics. Question. So I see on the divide, there's pretty, pretty central there, which you know I think makes a lot of sense. Like it's just not something I've seen in higher ed a lot. Right. Is that something that is vision that you are um, uh, sharing with your your uh, people that are in your consortium right now, or is that something that you get a feeling that they're supporting that vision? Because I, I think it's great. I think it's the place that higher ed needs to be. But I think we need to go there. I think we need, uh, as we move forward with, as we move forward with our vision, unless we have all these different entities on board and taking action on the data we're providing, I, you know, I don't think you'll, we'll see the change or we'll be able to drive to the benefit that we want. So you, you know, we have to be able to assess and drive, you know, at least provide the, the institution's data around each one of these entities and then give them, you know, or, or you know, you have an action plan for each one of these. So, yeah, we, we would have to have students, what are we doing at the student level? What kind of alerts are we, you know, are we coaching? How often are there certain students that we're, um, you know, we're, we're, we're prescri prescribing a program where if we, I can quartile these students and I can say these are the group, this is the group that's going to need help coming into a course three weeks or four, four weeks in, here's that, uh, here's that group of students. I don't have to worry about this group, you know, quartile one and two, but I really need to look at three and four. And then I need to get the advisors involved. I need to get the faculty involved in helping and in, in getting that, that data and then, and, and they need to help, you know, if we are looking for the ultimate outcome of student success and retention, you have to have all these three working together. Can, can I? I was going to piggy I don't know if this is on. I want to piggyback on that real quick, and we're going to we dwell for just a second because one of the things that we've talked about internally is, you know, here, here's a an alert. You need to go do something. What is that? Let's prescribe something. Let's let's you know. Here's the reasons why we're going to say there's an alert, right. and then let's prescribe an action. I want to know what that action was, and then feed that back into the system, the model, and see do we actually have any measured improvement? And keep doing that. Keep turning those dials. So that eventually, across the consortium, we can say. We've seen this technique work quite well, and this one work quite well in this instance, and so on. But we want to know, we want to be able to give them data why we need to take action, what action to take, measure the result, and keep doing that. I was just going to say, I see yeah. the parallels between, you know, where instructional designers were, I think, maybe five or six years ago, and not being seen as professionals, and maybe, you know, universities weren't paying for that. I, you know, so I, I go to these advisors, and I say, well, what about this, that, and the other, and then, I'm kind of, you know, comes back with this answer that sounds a lot like, you know, well, 
you know, that's not an instructional designer, that's just a curriculum developer, you know, that's, in, that's not the advisor's role. And mm. so it, it, it's always been curious to me where, like you said, how are you gonna affect these changes if there's not that component there? Yeah, and I, I think um, in fairness, I think we tread lightly in some cases because you're, you're challenging some traditions and, and the members, they're all different, right? They have different, some have a ton of advisors and they're happy to help and some they're limited. And, now we're trying to, we'll, we'll figure it out. And like I said, as long as we can measure it and show it, make it data driven, I think we'll have some really interesting discussions and I think we can, we can get them on board. But uh, you know, so far we're only talking about course level, we're talking on students, but right. Steve shows content, for example. I wanna see how the content's being consumed and does it matter? Did it really drive learner success, things like that? We and, wanna be and, able to measure that. And keep in mind, so our phase one, again, for the fall, so we have, um, we've committed to at least, right now we've committed to two phases, phase one, take the real-time data from Canvas, provide that to the institutions, and we'll provide some very basic level early warning system, uh, early warning indicators. That's this. <coughs> Phase two, as I said, introduce some more sophisticated modeling. And then, I, and I think with phase two, and that's a 2016 Q1, Q2 type time frame, that's where you start to bring in and, and really build out the strategy around how and how are these ent entities going to work and play with the data we provide. Phase three, I mean, ultimately, I want to have all this data. So you know, I, Unison's not we're not going to have um, uh, SIS data. We're not, we're not going to house that data. But I want to have you know, if, if possible, once the institutions have the data, I would love to have that data back anonymized, and then if I can ban benchmark across my uh, members. I can you know, help even prescribe some of the actions that we should be l looking at or taking because this is what I'm seeing in the data. And if I can do that at the, at the macro level, it becomes very powerful. It, it's a lot of data. We can start to take that and, and you know, shape some direction and strategy ar around improvement or you know, ultimate, ultimately outcome. And in fairness, that's tricky, but the good news is we've got some really good leading institutions as our membership, so it'll be uh, you know, I think we got the right partnership, put it that way, to try to drive those kind of actions. Question. You mentioned prescriptions. Yep. In terms of being able to help students. Yep. Um, with the phase of the that you're about, is there a vision that they'll be having dashboards which will empower them in more ways? Students themselves. Students themselves, rather than being told by the teacher or the machine, this will help them. Right. Um, there is. There is. So as part of... Sure, so the question is, uh, will students be part, will, will the students receive dashboards or reporting on their own performance? On their own analytics. On their own, yeah, on their own performance and analytics and, and perhaps, you know, next steps, on what do I do next? Well, like you see benchmark against their colleagues too, and their colleagues, right? So. Right, yeah, where, where do I stand? Where do I fit in, in this, you know, in, in this class and uh, on, this, on this list? That's a great question. So I, I, the, the vision is yes. I think we can, I, I want to be able to do that and provide that data and we're, we would love to even do that real time. Um, we are working with our vendors that uh, we, we should have our vendors, uh, we, we have not finalized who we're going with for, for these phases yet. We should have an announcement in the next two to four weeks. Part of what we are assessing and evaluating is who's done that and how effective have they been so far. So, yes, how do we get there? We need to define and determine, but the short answer is yes. Is there anything um, FERPA coming to that on the student access to data or any dashboard related to themselves or their peers? I'm, so, I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, does FERPA come into that about student privacy? If it's their own data, um, it, their yeah, does FERPA come into play if it's their own data? Yeah, the, the short, well, it's funny. I'd say FERPA comes into play in all of this <laughs> at some point, so we talk a lot about it. And even beyond that, the campuses themselves have their own policies or tolerances for certain things, so we're, we're working through all that stuff. So the vision's great, but then we got to get, we have to have those discussions. So right now we're just trying to figure out, technically, here's what we want to do, who's the best fit in these different areas, and then we're going to go drive some of the, the policy discussions on different campuses and try to make this come to fruition. But yeah, it comes into play in pretty much everything that we're talking about. <laughs> Question. For researchers that want to go beyond the actions that you're prescribing, 
Yes. Uh, I think that's a TBD. I think there's, we would have, so the question is, will institutions be able to um, review or, or assess another institution's anonymized data to then make a det you know, determination or develop an action? I think the, the right answer is yes. I think Unison would help facilitate that, and that's our role. Again, that's more of a phase two or phase three. I don't know if you would have direct access. Maybe it would be, you know, we would have a, a repository that Unison would house and, and, and own, and we would be able to provide that information to you. Now, how much access do you have as somebody who's data mining? You know, are you, are you running the queries yourself? I don't know the answer to that. We still need to determine and define that. But I, I, I don't see why not if it's anonymized and, you know, there are some, there, there are policies or, or programs you can put into place, the more data, you know, the better, the better it is, the more effective you can be. Question. That's a good point. So the, the point was made that the PAR frameworks are out there. We, we've, we've read them. We're fully aware. It's great. We talk about them a lot. Um, you know, we're obviously engaged with Caliper and no standards, and we really want to be able to integrate with a lot of these different repository, well, just call it points of ingestion of data. So I like that idea. Um, I'll say in full candor, we just don't know if their data dictionary is big enough for what we're trying to do, but we're getting there. I mean, it's pretty big, right? But in like Caliper, they've got, what, nine metric profiles, whatever they're blessed now on version one. I forget right. the count, but we're, we're way ahead of that, I think, and that's where uh, we're having some colorful conversations with our, our vendors. I think we're thought-wise kind of way ahead of the curve, and now technically we're trying to figure out what we can do, and then we'll go back and visit the policies. Question. Right. Right. Yep. So for, for phase one, so the question is um, storage and uh, really defining an integration architecture to, to ingest that data. So for phase one, we are um, Canvas is making the real time LMS data or Instructor is making the real time Canvas data available. We will take that data. It'll likely go through uh, a messaging queue that we'll build. We'll host that. And then that would be sent to each member institution. So the hosting of the data itself would be at the institutions themselves, our member institutions. And then in terms of vendor selection for phase one, we are, uh, as I said, we're, we're working on identifying a vendor, selecting a vendor that would, for phase one, again, very basic early warning systems that would be in place. Those warning systems would you know, likely go to faculty and advisor, I don't know if we would do for students in phase one. Um, that instance, that analytics instance would also be housed at the institution. Because all the data is there, you have your SIS data there, we're gonna have the analytic instance there, that data is then, you know, and then you're, you're sending that alert out. It may or may not be integrated within Canvas itself. It may be a, a separate portal, or it may be within a different view within your LMS. So we'll define all that. Phase two, I think we will have, you know, my, my vision and goal is you have additional metrics. Addition, you know, are there other ways, more effective ways to capture engagement, you know, understand engagement. Build that in and build some additional models. Again, continue to provide that data back to the uh, advisors and faculty, but then also introduce students as part of that phase two. And, and then, um, you know, what would be really cool is if we can build a, like a dashboard of some sort that's, that the uh, advisors or faculty have in terms of, you know, this person just took an exam or they took a test, how'd they do? And a lot of this data will be coming in real time, so we can try to build that out and, and you know, make, make available in real time. So I think there's a lot of exciting things where we've got planned and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're defining, as, but as, you know, as we've said, we want to start slow, we want to make sure we 
have established a solid base and foundation, and that really comes down to do we have the right fields, do we have the right information from LMS, and then build on top of that. Don't want to build on, uh, you know, on a uh, house of cards. I want to say something just totally candid because I said it to our, our news and membership. Uh, we've got nine, eight or nine use cases that, we've, that we're kind of proliferating and pushing out there to say that these are the use cases for real-time data. But what I told them even yesterday was, you know, think about the ways that we measure our own data on a daily basis, right? People got Fitbits or whatever they're tracking on their phone, how many steps they're taking today. So why can't we do that in higher ed? You know, everyone's kind of poo-pooed this the last several months. You don't need real-time data, but I'm just calling BS to a degree and saying, yeah, you, you say that, but... We probably said the same thing about how many steps we were taking 10 years ago. I, I don't know. So I'm just saying that's not a good, good enough reason for me. I think we should just because we can for lack of a better reason, but we've established some pretty useful use cases working with guys like Vince Kellen at University of Kentucky and our vendors and so on, and I think you know, we'll take it from there. But it's, uh, it's, it's exciting to see Instructure get on board and starting now right. make this data available real time is pretty cool. We're not allowed to talk about that right now. <laughs> but I agree. I like, there's so many, there's use cases there for sure when you talk about adaptive learning and some other things in that regard for sure. But again, Steve's right. You know, think big, start small, move fast. This is kind of where we're at right now. But, you know, big picture, that's, that's pretty cool. That comes into play. Question. Right. They're sick and tired of doing post-mortem uh, analysis of the students that they knew were going to struggle, and guess what? Right. It came true. So my question is, okay. and, and maybe it goes back to phase one, Yep. and, and I'm going to say this as, as uncynical as I can, what is the incentive for faculty to provide information to you, or are there going to be enough systems in place to extract that information without requiring a faculty member to steps because they're incredibly busy so it's it's that's not a tick to faculty that's a they have a lot going on so where is that initial information going to come from or how the, is it going to come yeah from? so um the initial so how is faculty the question is how is faculty what's faculty's role in phase one deliverables how cumbersome, is it how cumbersome? as little as possible <laughs> bottom line is we want to take we want to automate as much as possible. We want to take the data from the LMS. We want to, uh, you know, integrate and pull some data from uh, the, the, you know, the, the SIS database, this information. And it, it's almost the faculty, the advisors, the end user, the, the, the individual or entity that's consuming the, the, the data, they're not going to be part of building that data. They are going to be, you know, now they're going to be responsible for, okay, what do I do with this data? So, you know, so yeah, I mean, we want to make this very automated and, and keep, keep them, you know, not, not responsible for providing inputs in, in building any of the analytics or any of the reporting. And from the advising standpoint, at a number of institutions, I won't go into detail about where I've worked, but the advisors want to help. They can't find the, the data that's out there someplace. Faculty members submit something that goes somewhere. And if it goes just to the students, the students who are most at risk are the ones who aren't going to bring attention to themselves right. to go see an advisor on their own. There has to be a mechanism to ex you know, extract that information and, for lack of a better term, let the grown-ups in the room right. sort of handle it. Right. Yeah. So that wasn't a question. That was a comment. <laughs> No, I appreciate that. And in terms of incentives in general, um, we're engaging. We've created a, well, we haven't created, but our, our membership has created a teaching and learning group that's pretty active in our membership. Uh, and they're going to help steer a lot of this stuff with us. So they're going to be the voice for their respective campuses. And there's a couple that are on each campus. And uh, we're going to leverage them pretty heavily with all of these anal analytics tools, the content relay, all of it. So, you know, I don't want to pretend to have all the answers and know that we're, you know, what we're doing is the right thing. We're going to leverage them pretty heavily. Question.
I think. Well, in general, I think we're, you know, part of our vision is to drive standards, right? And really kind of use our leverage, our consortium's clout, you know, their size to help keep pushing that. And part of the reason we engaged with Instructure was because they are very standards-based. I mean, they, if you want an LTI tool, they got the first store, right? So we keep saying they're pretty awesome. So that was one good reason, right? They're best in class, what they're doing right now. We, we recognize that, so that was an obvious one. Um, and they're open. So I think, you know, we'll keep trying to push that, that openness and those standards-based regardless. So you, at the very least, you should benefit from some of that stuff on the periphery just because. But as far as some of the actual tools go, we haven't, we haven't really figured out that model yet. We're kind of heads down just trying to deliver this stuff, and then when we kind of come up for error, I think we'll start reevaluating some of that. And that's a key um, characteristic or requirement for any of the vendors we select. So they have to be open. They have to meet. You know, they have to, they're following RAM. I mean, there's standards that, that are out there that we, they must adhere to, and we are, and that's definitely a, a criteria on, uh, you know, on vendor selection. Uh, so let me also address the question about um, sort of Unison's role in influencing Instructure and even any of our other partner um, companies. Um, a great example of this is um, actually this real-time data and even the analytics um, solution, the, the Canvas data uh, project writ large. Yeah, so um, we've been working, when I say we, Utah State's been working um, with them for years on this, but it wasn't really until Unison came into the picture and had set some very high demands um, that our constituents within Unison and the consortium um, had on having access to their um, LMS generated data. And once uh, Unison really stepped in and said, this is an expectation we have, we have a very large constituency behind us and, our, and s as a result, we're now seeing the benefits of that that are not only for Unison, but for the whole community um, uh, that are using Canvas, um, including the, the real-time data it will become an option, um, along with uh, definitely the, the analytics. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. He's like a wounded animal, 10 years in the bit. <laughs> Question over here. Right, so the question is, what's, what's our plan or vision to integrate and ingest data outside of just the LMS? So content, other content, other repositories. That's definitely in play. That would be more of a, a longer term, phase two, phase three. So as we introduce additional uh, functionality into our ecosystem, our plan is, again, working with our vendors to ensure, right now this is phase one, it's the LMS, it's Canvas, but as we expand, and as we, as we you know, de deliver more functionality, absolutely. It, it, will, it will definitely take in and account for other, other applications and other functionality in the Unison ecosystem. You, you guys might actually seen this presentation half an hour ago where they talked about some, they kind of glanced over it, but the social side of it, for example, that's, that's why not consider that, right? There may be other things that are absolutely not in the LMS that we should consider because that may paint a better picture, a, a fuller picture perhaps give an advisor a, a better picture of what the student really is about. Sure, we look at traditional, you know, things like SATs or whatever, and it may be based on where the student's from. So right. Geographical issues. So, yeah, long, right. yeah, short answer, yes. It's just we got to phase it in, you know. Again, think big, start small. It's definitely on the, on the road map. Yep. So... We're at time. I'm probably um, in the way of other very exciting <laughs> things going on after our meeting. So any other questions? Otherwise, we will wrap. All right. Thank you so much for attending. We appreciate it.